our prophetic team for the month is my star is rising. Say it confidently. Don't mind your neighbor. Shout it. Let everyone hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in our Sunday service teachings, we have been focusing on the subject unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. Unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. And this morning, we are looking at part two in this service, in, 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 this, in this Sunday service, and specifically in this first service, we are looking at part 2A, unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. Hallelujah. And specifically, we are looking at our limit breaking heritage from the mirror of the world. The word of God we have established that is the mirror of our destiny. It shows us exactly the picture of what God has for us in destiny. James chapter 1 and verses 22 to 25 paints the word of God as a mirror. He said, beholding him, for, for be ye doers of the word and not hearers alone deceiving yourself. For if any man be a hearer of the word, not a doer, is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass mirror. For he beholded himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeted what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, continued learning, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Beholding his natural face in a glass. Beholding his natural face, his real self in a mirror. That's what the word of God does. The word of God mirrors back to us our actual destiny by God. Which means nothing can be truer than what the mirror is showing you. So if you want to know God's plan for your life, go to the mirror. If you want to know who you are actually, go to the mirror. If you want to know what is in God's heart for you, why you are created, what he created you for, his plans and purpose, go to the mirror. Not what somebody is telling you, what, not what the situation is dictating, not what your custom, your culture is saying. No. Not what the doctors have said. No. Go to the mirror. Go to the mirror. That's your true identity. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, we want to look at what the mirror of life is saying concerning us. Praise the Lord. What is the mirror of the world saying concerning me? Because for you to have a breaking limit experience, you must first of all know who you are and what the mirror is reflecting concerning you. What is the mirror of life saying? Which is the word of God, number one. That you are redeemed a fruitful vine, not a barren fig. Is that not interesting to know? You are redeemed a fruitful vine. And not a barren fig. You are a fruitful vine. Can I hear you say I'm a fruitful vine? So you are ordained to be fruitful in every area of your life. Fruitful in your body. Fruitful in your marriage. Fruitful in your career. Fruitful. You know, your academics, in every area of your life, you are ordained a fruitful vine. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't let any medical report confuse you. Psalm 128 and verses 1 to 5. Psalm 128, he said, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of your hands, happy shall thou be. And it shall be well with you. You will eat the labor of your hand. You will not labor in vain. You will not be walking and another one eating. You will have what to show. The work of your hand will be fruitful. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. And he said, it shall be well with thee. How many people are receiving that? That's what the mirror of life is saying. It shall be well with thee. 
So whenever we say to ourselves, it is well, it's not just a religious slogan. That's what the mirror says about you. So some people have turned into ordinary slogan. That's what God is saying. I don't care the situation you are. He said, it is well with you. I wonder the way some of you even say it. He say, say it just saying it. So how is everything? Mm, my sister, it is well. Oh. Mm, it is well. Abby, you know well. Mm. What be the thing we make? They say we could talk with that. It is well. <clears throat> Amen. No, it is well. <laughs> it is well. Mm. <laughs> it is well. Mm. It is well. See all these things I'm passing through. Anyway, it is well. It is well. I thank God it is well. <clears throat> it is well. It is well. We don't hear now. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what the mirror of life is saying. It is well with thee. Say to yourself, it is well with me. And verse 3, he said, your wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By the size of thy house, thy children like olive plants round about your table. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So if the devil is telling you, you are burning, tell him, shut up. My wife is a fruitful vine. So I, she will not only bear a child, my children. That's what the Bible says. So it's not just whether she will conceive or not. He said, my children shall be round about my table. So put the size of the dining table in your house as much as you desire. If it is four, put four. four. If it is six, put six. If it is eight, put eight. If it is twelve, perfect. <laughs> and if it is twenty-four, put one downstairs. Another one upstairs. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, my children shall be about the table with me. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the picture of the mirror of life concerning you. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that fear the Lord. Look at verse, very interesting. Look at verse 6. He said, The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Go back to verse 5. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. And verse 6, Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. <laughs> Thou, you, you see, this is the picture. Get it clear. Get it clear. Get it clear. He said, your wife will not only conceive and have a child. His children run about your people. I say, he doesn't even stop there. The mirror of life is saying, you will not only see your children. You will see your children's children. Children's children. Begin to paint that picture. Begin to paint that picture. Look at celebration time. See your children and their children, your grandchildren coming around. See yourself sitting. See all your grandchildren coming in to, 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 to push you, to play with you, and pinch you. And you know, see yourself running around the house with them. Just see it because that's what the Bible says. So where is the place of barrenness? Anyone that the devil have said you are barren, I curse it right there in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 5 and verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 5 and verses 1 to 3. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Can you see? Say I'm fruitful. Say I'm fruitful. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. He looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth white grapes. Now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, the men of Judah, judge, I pray thee, between me and my vineyard. But what is most important there is to say, you are planted on a fruitful hill. You must be fruitful. That's what the mirror of life is saying. Number two, you are redeemed a lively stone to command dominion. You are redeemed a lively stone to command dominion, you are a lively stone. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. He said, 
ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are built up. You are lively stones. You are lively stones. 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 No devil can tread on you anyhow. Your life is meant for dominion. No matter the battles, they will bow at you. That's what the Bible says. We are redeemed as lively stones. In Matthew chapter 21 and verses 41 to 45. Matthew chapter 21 and verses 41 to 45. And specifically, verse 42, Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Everyone trying to push you down, they will look up and see you. Praise the name of the Lord. The stone which the builder rejected, it will be the head of the corner. The head. You that people thought that nothing good can happen in your life, they are soon coming to bow down to you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is pressing you and wants to press you down, God will make you grow between their fingers in the name of Jesus. And look at verse 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Anyone that dares your life, they shall be grounded to powder in the name of Jesus. That's who you are. Don't be afraid. The Bible says you are a lively stone to command dominion. Hallelujah. No matter the battles, they will fall for your sake. He says, surely they will gather. They will take counsel. Because the counsel is not of me. They will fall for your sake. For no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you, thou shalt condemn in judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. You are a lively stone. You are a lively stone. You are a lively stone. Wherever they take your name to for evil, thunder will strike there in the name of Jesus. Isaac was digging. And the Bible says they were covering. They were covering. He was digging. They were covering. Until they gave up on him. And said, leave this man. Leave this man. He will weary us away. Leave this man. And now Isaac got to his robot. I speak in the name of Jesus. Everyone pursuing you and trying to stop you. God will weary them away in the name of Jesus. I decree they will give up on you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that says you will not leave, they will be the one not to live in the name of Jesus. Anyone that wants to see you dead, they will go to the grave in the name of Jesus. They will die your death in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout aloud that amen. Anyone that says that family will not see peace, they are torn to pieces now. Anyone that says that family shall not be fruitful, whatever they do, wherever they go, their plans are scattered in the name of Jesus. Anyone that says your children shall not enjoy life, it is their own children that will not enjoy life. In the name of Jesus. Give me shout a louder, amen. You are a lively stone. Praise the name of the Lord. Lively stone. Number three. What is the mirror of life saying? You are redeemed an ambassador of Christ to command dignity. Hallelujah. You are redeemed an ambassador of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are, we are redeemed as ambassadors for a life of dignity, not shame. Who is an ambassador? He's one that is representing his nation wherever he goes. Representing his nation. He's representing the nation. Whatever honor that ought to be given to the nation is what they give him. Praise the name of the Lord. You touch an ambassador, you have touched a nation. That nation will react. We react. The entire nation will react. 
Praise the name of the Lord. We react. Many years ago, serving in one of the African nations, and then that particular nation has some political issue in the nation. And one of their, you know, political um, leaders that they were targeting to kill, they pursued him and pursued him, and he ran into the U.S. embassy. And the soldiers of that nation shot the U.N. embassy building. It was war. The entire U.S. as a nation rose up. Before you knew what was happening, they said they were sending in war boats and all manners of things. The president had to come out and publicly apologize because it was going to be war. That was just a building that was shot, not a person. Praise the name of the Lord. A building, just a building. So can you imagine if it was the ambassador that was harassed or so? That's who you are. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. You, you are representing the almighty God. Whatever should, cannot touch God ought not to touch you. Whatever honor that is meant for God, you know, you should enjoy the dignity. You are not for shame. You are not for reproach. You are an ambassador of Christ. He that cometh from above is above all. Praise the name of the Lord. From today, shame will be far from you in the name of Jesus. From today, sickness will be far from you in the name of Jesus. Reproach will be far from you in the name of Jesus. You can't see an ambassador begging. An ambassador? You don't beg. You go with authority. You speak with authority. An ambassador goes to any meeting, he wants to make a speech, they play the anthem of his nation. Praise the name of the Lord. They address them as your excellency, his excellency. Not, you know, a citizen, you know, or just ordinary citizen. No, you should know who you are. Carry yourself with dignity. You're an ambassador representing God. If you know that, then it will govern every area of your life. Anywhere you are found, you will carry yourself with dignity. Praise the name of the Lord. An ambassador does not just go to a just anywhere. It's not every place he's invited that he goes. You are an ambassador of Christ. What are you doing in the drinking bar? What are you doing there? He said, oh, do you know they were my friends? I, I, I don't drink, I don't drink, I just... I just in the drinking bar, they are there puffing cigarettes to you. You are there swallowing everything. Is that that situation you preach? You see down there. An ambassador of Christ now escorting your friend to his concubine's house. And then you know his wife. The wife is a member of the church. You greet every day. It's my year of breaking limits. And after the service, you will escort her husband to his concubine's house. You see down there, they are doing all manners of evil. Put you in the parlor and put one, one, one bottle or two bottles of Martina. You cross your leg, you are watching TV. Is that an ambassador? An ambassador, um, an ambassador does not appear anyhow. The way you are dressing, is that how an ambassador should dress? Expose all your body. And yet you want to marry. Half of your body is out. Dancing and dancing like lizard about. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know who you are at all? Is that how an ambassador behave? Right in God's presence, you carry phone. In God, service is going on. An ambassador is a man of dignity, a person of dignity. Right inside church. You're doing Facebook. of an ambassador. No respect for God. Right before the presence of God. Right before the presence of God. 
As I'm speaking now, some people are sending texts to their distance. No matter, the man just they shout anyhow. I go use my phone. I buy them for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Ambassador of Christ, you, you come with torn jeans to God's presence. Can an ambassador appear like that outside? Torn jeans with this thing, and you put one t shirt, one lion grill like this there. <laughs> to God's presence. Now, when I come in, I may well go shock the communion. <laughs> see, now, brother, how many days make we carry? I beg, make I carry five, they get plenty there. Man. Is that the life of an ambassador? Praise the name of the Lord. Carry yourself with dignity. Carry yourself with dignity. Carry yourself with dignity. Carry yourself. You are, you are not married. Carry yourself with dignity. You are married. Carry yourself with dignity. The way you appear is the way people will talk to you. Praise the name of the Lord. The way you dress is the way you will be addressed. Wake up. The way you comport yourself, an ambassador does not talk anyhow. Anyhow. To, 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 everything you must commit. Chat, your mouth cannot keep quiet. My sister, you don't hear? Come, 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 come. Make them not see us. They see us now in trouble. Come, come. Service is going on. It's outside there. You won't hear one message. All in the name of your, in one group. Just talk, 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 talk. The one you see, you talk. The one you don't see, you talk. This mouth cannot keep quiet. Praise the name of the Lord. Position yourself. Know who you are. The mirror of life says you are an ambassador of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are going places. Praise the name of the Lord. You are going places. You are going places. You are going places. You see some ladies are not married. Nothing is wrong with them as it were. But you just somebody say, me, I know if you married that one. Nobody say nothing wrong, but you two talk. Hi, the man know the rest. She, 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 she. Ah, oh, wow. Praise the name of the Lord. Number four, who are you from the middle of the world? You are redeemed a seed of Abraham for generational impact. Genesis, I mean Galatians chapter 3 and verses 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. It is written, cause is everyone that hungered a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And verse 29 says, because if we are, if then we be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed? And he is according to the promise, which means that whatever he said to Abraham is extended to us. And then whatever he says to us is extended to our children's children. Genesis 22 and verses 17 to 18. What did he say to Abraham? In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Which means you are ordained a generational blessing to make generational impact, positive impact. You are not ordained as a liability. No, a blessing. You are ordained to be a blessing. To your family, to your immediate neighborhood, to your nation, and to the world. See yourself in that light. Don't make yourself a liability. You have ordained a generational blessing to make impact. To make impact. So that's why you must position yourself in a covenant. Stop. Many are so myopic. Me, myself, and I. No. Your impact will not only reach your family, it will go beyond. God's son, Bishop Edipo, has become a global phenomenon, a global blessing. That's what God is making you in that business God has given to you. God wants you to touch your generation with it. Start looking beyond yourself. 
Praise the name of the Lord. You may be starting small today, but you'll be an employer of labor. Employer of labor. Let your heart be panting on how to make impact in the lives of people. If God has put anything in your hands, it's not just for show. It's to affect people positively. Any money you claim to have and then people cannot benefit from it is no, is no riches. It will soon fly away. True riches is the one that touches people. That touches people. That puts smile in the faces of people. A millionaire is not one who has a million naira. It's one who has touched a million lives. You are ordained a blessing. A blessing that you will sit there. You will be making impact in the kingdom. Bringing people to church. Transporting them. Believing God to buy buses. Bringing them. That's how you should be thinking. Thinking. Getting people established in life. People who are worthless. Getting them. Putting something in their hands. Putting work into their hands that will enable them to be feeding their family. Can you see the kind of impact that that will be? That generation will not forget you. That's who you are. Not waiting after service. Not going to following car by car. Begging for transport money. Is that life? Praise the name of the Lord. You are ordained to make generational impact. Look beyond where you are now. That's what the book is saying. Look beyond where you are. Look beyond where you are. Do something that your unit. Do something that your home set. Do something in that your district. That's who you are. Not sitting down like a crying baby. I need this one. I need that one. I need this one. I need this one. You know, everybody is sending things to you. When will you be a blessing to people? When you be, oh God, touch their heart to give me, touch their heart to give me. You have been praying that prayer. When will you start touching? When you start extending to other people? Don't make your life like the Red Sea. The Red Sea is the Dead Sea. Why? Because everything empties into it is not going out to anywhere. Don't die a consumer. You, God has placed you in a position. It's not for pride, it is to help people. To help people. Affect their lives positively. That's how to be a generational blessing and make impacts. Target God's kingdom. Target your brethren. Target your family. Target people. Those who live to themselves, they die. But those who live for others, they live forever. Praise the name of the Lord. You won't die a liability. God will make you a global impact in the name of Jesus. How do I assess God's plan from his word? Number one, one must continue to walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Revelations 1, 10 to 11. I was in the spirit in the last day and I heard a great voice behind me. I heard before me a great voice. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 25. The Bible says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Men of great impact in life, they are men of the spirit. Not carnal men. Not carnal people. Not bread and butter Christians. Carnality. No. Men who are men of exploits, they hear from God. They know how to walk in the spirit. They do not dwell in the natural level. They see what the natural man can see. They hear from God. When you hear from God, the world must hear you. And then to hear from God, you must be in the spirit. You must be in the spirit. You must be in the spirit. They see from the spiritual realm. Praise the name of the Lord. If your spirit man is not alive, how can you hear from God? When you, when you live your life in carnality, it blocks your spiritual antenna. You can't hear from God. You can't receive the things of the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. A spiritual person will be driving after the things of the spirit. A carnal man will be driving after the things of the flesh. He's so active when it comes to the works of the flesh. You will see, you know, backbiting is a champion. Malice is a champion. Pride is a champion. Criticism is a champion. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, forgiveness. Oh, that's where his anointing is. 
The works of the flesh will be so evident in his life that there will be no iota of spirituality. But if you are a man of the spirit, you see beyond those things. Praise the name of the Lord. You'll be driving after spiritual things. Operation 10 for Christ 2020, fire. Covenant our prayer, fire. Home self fellowship, fire. Bible school, fire. Praise the name of the Lord. Bringing souls to Jesus, fire. Transporting people to church, fire. Distributing to the necessity of people, fire. Everything spiritual is on fire. Praise the name of the Lord. How do I know I am, I am, I am kind of spiritual? That, those are the indications. Those are the indications. Those are the indications. How can you be in the same house with your wife? Two months. Three months. You are not in talking terms. And you are not feeling anything. Your spirit is cut out to dead. And you are even excited. Yes. I'm hitting her. And they show her. Kanama. Kanama. And then you are in the same house. And then you claim to be praying. You come. Oh God, bring souls to Jesus. Establish them. As I speak to them this week, bring them, bring them, bring them. There is one way there for your house. You never establish, brother. You are about losing her. That's your false soul. Recover that person. And recover yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, we must remain committed to be guided by the Spirit. We must remain committed. We must remain committed. We must remain committed. Committed to be guided by the Spirit. You tune yourself to divine guidance. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end, therefore, is a way of destruction. Isaiah 48, verses 17 and 21. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, which leadeth thee to profit. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go? And verse 21, he led them and they touched not. He led them through the wilderness, through the desert. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. Impossible things became possible. He clipped the rock also and the waters gushed out. When God is leading you, the impossibilities become possibilities. Hallelujah. Tune yourself to divine guidance. Don't guide yourself. You don't know the way. He knows the way. The Lord is my shepherd and he gives you rest. Hallelujah. He said, trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Don't lean on your understanding. Your understanding is limited. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou go. I will guide thee with my eye. That's God speaking. I will lead you. Subject yourself to divine guidance. Uh, it's not all things that glitter that is gold. Somebody may look good to you. It may not fit into your own life as a wife or husband. Let God lead you. Let him direct you. A business may be looking good from the packaging. There may be, it may be a trap in disguise. Let God lead you. There is a way that seems right. It may seem right, but it may be dangerous. Subject yourself to divine guidance. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, it's our, it's our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. And God is visiting every home today. And every marital destiny that is stagnated shall be loose today in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to know that if you are born again, as a child of God, you have the God-given right to fulfill your glorious marital destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are redeemed, you have the right for your glorious marital destiny to be fulfilled. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28, he blessed man in the beginning. He created man, made man in his image after his likeness, gave him dominion over the fish, fowl, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And what more? Verse 27. The Bible says, God created man in his own image. He created male and female. 
male and female. Talking about husband and wife, you want to be married, it is your redemptive right. You want children, male and female, it's your redemptive right. Because every marriage ought to be fruitful by God's program. So God wants your marital destiny to be fulfilled. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, even though the devil has come to steal and kill, but I've come to give you life, to give you more abundantly, to enjoy abundant life. You are ordained to enjoy abundant peace, joy in that home. Every obstacle that the enemy has put your way is rolled away today in the name of Jesus. Our God is a marriage maker. So, we are not permitted to be married beggars. Oh God, I beg now. I beg now. Me self, I won't marry. I won't marry. Abby, you are not to beg for any good thing. For they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Even though the lion may suffer and lack you know, hunger. But they that seek after the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10. There shall not lack any good thing. You are not expected to lack any good thing in redemption. Including marriage. Including marriage. God is a marriage maker. He can make it happen in your life. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. It's not good for a man to be alone. I will make for him a helpmate. I will bring to manifest his wife or husband. I will bring to manifest their children. Psalm 68 and verse 6. God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. Everyone that the enemy has bound, he has bound their marital destiny. Today, by the blood of Jesus, they shall be lost in the name of Jesus. It is the devil that binds people's destiny. Maybe some wicked forces have taken your name somewhere. And I've said, I will see how she will get married. I will see how he will get married. Never. And they have chained down your marital destiny. Who is it that saith and it cometh to pass? When the Lord has not spoken. Every of such plot of the devil. Today, I declare you lost in the name of Jesus. That's why we advise young people, don't put yourself in chains. Be straightforward. Be straightforward. Don't be a deceit. Don't be a deceit. You are not married. As a young man, you go about deceiving sisters. I want to marry you. I, I just, I want to marry you. In fact, you know, as we were praying the other day in the unit, so I don't know what took my eyes. The Holy Spirit just took my eyes to your direction. And immediately, a word from God just came to my heart. Liar. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And then you leave that one and go to another person. Go to another person. And you are taking advantage of them. You think that is life. You are chaining down your destiny. It is that life. And all of them will be bringing things for you. You will be collecting. Lord, I thank you. The prophecy is working. I'm breaking limits. You will soon break down. That's not life. That's not life. Causing pains in the heart of sisters. And you are rejoicing. He's rejoicing. You are even bragging. Tell your friend, you, you know, not anything. Me, they are they life. Oh. Check all those my wardrobe. Now, then bring those clothes for me. I just did. They shove life. They shove life. They shove and go. See, a wolf no get bone. He don't get bone now. And a sharp bone. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't mortgage your destiny. Be straightforward. Be straightforward. You are a young lady. Don't go after people's husband. It's a curse. Don't go after people's husband. Is that how to get married? Don't go after people's husband. Go for your own. You have your own. You have your own. No matter how it is, if you borrow something from somebody, you can't use it like your own. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't use it at all. You borrow dress, you'll be wearing it. With, you can't move your hand. As, if I'm, ah, it go tear. Okay. So you just be. You, but if it is your own, you have liberty. You have liberty. 
go after people's husband. And they are talking to you. You say, and so what? I'm waiting now, I'm waiting. Go, go die. No being come talk to me. I better go, Joe. I run on your own. Now something you see for me where you no get. They, they jealous. Oh, die, carry your head, heat mode. Now you shall be. I just they they shop my own life. Is the name of the Lord? That's not how to be fulfilled maritally. Do it well so that it will be well with you. Don't go about breaking people's home. Go about breaking people's home. Some people now, after this service, now they have appointment with people's husband. People's husband. You have almost carried somebody's husband and they say, do your worst. They have talked to you, no way. Is that life? Is that Christianity? Praise the name of the Lord. Some just carry their luggage and go and put it in a man's house. Because the man says he will marry you. Three years now, you are struggling for him to pay your dowry. And what does not belong to him is taking it free of charge. And you are opening your eyes gradually. He's destroying your destiny and you are smiling. Every day now, you carry anointing oil. With his picture in the name of Jesus, the heart of the king is in the lost head. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. You carry blood and sprinkle. I sprinkle you in the name of Jesus. I sprinkle you in the name of Jesus. In his house. And as you are praying, he's hearing you. He said, Mumu, sprinkle me where, where. You want to be settled? Do it well. And it shall be well with you. Do it well. Do it well. You have your husband. You have your God ordained wife waiting for you. Reposition well. And God will connect you to your God ordained husband and you shall be fulfilled in life. I prophesy to you every delayed marriage is here broken in the name of Jesus. Grace to take the right step. In fulfilling your marital destiny, receive it in the name of Jesus. How do I actualize my glorious marital destiny? Number one, remain in love with God. Romans 8 28. All things work together for good to those who love God. Remain in love with God. Keep loving God. Keep serving Him. Keep loving Him. And then God will make good your marital home. Number two, be committed. To kingdom advancement endeavor. Matthew 6 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Go after souls. This year, establish your ten service. So go after souls. And God will go after what concerns you. Hallelujah. Number three, beware of pride. Beware of pride. A proud man cannot be corrected. Beware of pride. Don't think too big of yourself. That's what is breaking down your home. No, 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 no. I can't, how can I apologize to my wife for where? Never. And the devil is turning down your home. Pride. You speak to your husband anyhow. No, no, no. In my place of work, people respect me. It's only my husband. Go and marry them now. Praise the name of the Lord. Beware of pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before a fall. That's the devil's tool. Don't let him destroy your home. And lastly, number four, believe in God and his prophets. Believe in God and his prophets. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe also in his prophets, you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, he was preserved. Prophets are for the preservation of the destiny of men. This is a prophetic commission. God has given us a prophet in this commission for the liberation of souls. And thank God, he has duplicated himself in many other people called the sons of the prophet. I stand this day, standing on behalf 
of the prophets, as one of the sons of the prophet, I speak to you. Every chain of the devil over your life is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Very shortly, we are going to be rising up to take the communion. This communion is going to destroy every generational curse. It's going to establish peace and joy in every home in the name of Jesus. Reuben was under a curse in Genesis chapter 49. Why? Because he slept with his father's house. I don't know whatever step you have taken before. I don't know whatever life you are living that has placed you under one kind of curse or the other. But in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 6, another higher prophet came on the same called Moses. And he prophesied to the life of Reuben. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die. Hallelujah. Whatever is dying in your life, whatever effect of course that is working over your life, I stand as one of the sons of the prophet. I declare it broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not making you connect maritally, it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Wherever they have taken your name to, they have tied down your destiny. It is hereby lost in the name of Jesus. Every generational cause that is at work in any family right now, that is not making people get married or making people have their children, it is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Every turbulent marriage now, I command peace in the name of Jesus. Every home that is at the verge of divorce right now, I command peace in the name of Jesus. Every separated home, I command restoration in the name of Jesus. Every eligible single waiting for marriage, I command divine connections in the name of Jesus. And I decree the blessings of God over every home now in the name of Jesus. No more crisis in any home. The peace of God begins to reign. In the name of Jesus. You will connect with every good thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. Shake two, ten, three people. Tell them the snare is broken. You have your testimony.